the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. At that time, as Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. And Jesus, looking upon him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go sell and what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. At that saying, his countenance fell, and he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You lack one thing, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we usually talk about the Ten Commandments, we divide them into two groups, like the two tablets that Moses held. And sometimes even in Christian art, you see that three of the commandments, the first three, are on one tablet, and the seven others on the second tablet. The first three concern God, what we are, what we owe to God. And the second set, the other seven, concern our neighbor. In the gospel, when this rich young man comes up to Jesus, Jesus asks the young man about the contents of the second tablet. And when Jesus says, why do you call me good? Only God is good. He's inviting him to recognize that Jesus is God. In going through the commandments, Jesus doesn't just point them out to condemn our hearts, where we see that we have failed to live up to all these commandments, but so that we might seek help from him, from the one who alone is good. And that's why he concludes all this by saying, come, follow me. In other words, obey the first three commandments the set on the first tablet. Put me at the center, put Jesus at the center. 
Now what is going on in all this? We often think of Jesus as saving us from the consequences of our sin. I'll put it to you simply. Do you want to go to hell? No? Okay. Do you want to be holy? Okay, which one were you more enthusiastic about? And this reveals something about us. Of course, many of us were more frightened of hell. But if we actually say, I want to be holy, I want to be good, we think, mm, that's a bit too difficult. We get a glimpse of this in the way people, modern people talk about heaven. You know, when someone dies, they say, oh, I hope he's up there, up there in a pub somewhere with all his old mates having a great crack. And you think, what? You mean you want him to, in eternity, carry on the same old rubbish that he did in this life? The same old nonsense for eternity? That would be hell. That would be hell in a pub. Going to heaven is not just about avoiding hell. How can we live in heaven if we're totally unused to it? Imagine a husband who does all his duties. He provides for his wife and children. He does everything required of him. But he does not know his wife and his love for her is dutiful. How suited would you say he is for marriage? Okay, I see all the ladies shaking their heads. Come on. How suited is he? Would you marry him, ladies? No? Are you sure? Yeah, of course you shouldn't. In a sense, how suited are we for heaven? In the same sense. If we're not used to a relationship with God, how can we enjoy heaven? If all this life is about is about avoiding hell. If we don't have a relationship with God, how can we ever enjoy heaven? And that's why many of us might have a very long purgatory if we even make it that far. A very long purgatory. Not that purgatory is long, long with respect to us on earth. Because so much has to change about us if we are to love God and to enjoy his love, and to love him freely ourselves. In simple terms, we need freedom not just from hell, we need freedom from sin. And for that, we have to have our treasure in heaven. That is, not to be possessed by our own possessions. Is our treasure in heaven? Is what we truly love in heaven? Because so long as we make an earthly God here, we are not suited for heaven. So long as we say things like, as my, my, my main priorities are my family's health, or my wife, or my, my husband, if they are your priorities, if you have made a God out of them, then we are of all people the most to be pitied, because they will fail one day. They will die one day. And then what happens to us? But if our God is the true and living God, then all these other things that we love, wife, husband, children, all these things have a hope of enduring for eternity because we have loved God first and put him in the center. Can a rich man be saved? Jesus had rich friends who helped him and his disciples. But for this particular young man, Jesus says, sell everything you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. And when the disciples ask him about this, he says, well, with God, all things are possible. Also for a rich man to be saved. Because a poor man could be greedy. A poor man could be obsessed with nonsense, like branded goods. Chanel and Louis Vuitton and Joe Malone, and I'm running out of my brand names now. <laughs> All this kind of nonsense. I know, I have to mention Joe Malone. He makes wonderful handbags. <laughs> <laughs> but if this is our treasure, how pitiful are we? How pitiful. Who cares what kind of shirts or polo shirts you wear, 
or what kind of dress, where it's come from. Who cares about this nonsense? But many of us do. And those who do are pitiful, are pathetic. Pathetic in its original sense of pitiful. I remember a young girl said to me, she knew the difference between a fake Chanel handbag and a, a real one. And I thought, what a waste of talent. <laughs> what a waste. Wouldn't it be better if she loved Jesus and knew the difference between what is truly holy and what is not? With God, all things are possible. Therefore, if you have your possessions, make sure you are not possessed by them and that you can give away freely the things that you have without clinging to them and possess true treasure, treasure in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.